In the last couple of chapters, we've been doing something. We've been adding information to our images using keywords, looking at metadata, things that are embedded into the image naturally, say by the camera. It stands to reason that the more information we can add, or the more information we know about an image, the easier it is for us to find it. And that's common sense. We are in the library module, and we're going to start talking about library filters right here. The filters. If you don't see this bar up here, reach over on your keyboard and press the backslash key. That's a toggle to open or close that filter area. You say, well, what if I forget that? I've mentioned this before, that most of these can be found from the pull-down menu. So if we go to the word view, for example, there it is, show filter bar. But there is a feature I like, and while I'm here, I'm going to show it to you now. Reach over on your keyboard and press the control key down and press the forward slash key. Check that out. In one area are all the shortcuts for library. Click on it. Let's come over to the word develop, just to show you a different one, and press it again. Control forward slash, and there are all the shortcut keys for the develop module for map, book, slideshow, print, and web. I love that feature. So if you're really looking for that shortcut, you're pulling the menus down, can't really find it, and don't forget you can save an hour out of every eight learning shortcut keys. That's a quick way to get to them. Let's go back to library. Two ways that we can filter here. Actually, there's a lot of ways, but two main ways. I have a folder selected down here. It's called Wichita Snow, and that's what you're seeing over here, of course. If I decide not to apply filters, they will only be applied to this folder. And that's a good thing to know because you can really select things. But if I go way up here, and you see I got a lot of folders. If I go into my folder which says Andy's Image Files, and there are 17,000 some images in there, and I click here, then when I use filters, they will be applied to all of those images. So that's what we're going to do for now. And let's start with attributes. So again, if you don't see this, press the backslash key. In attribute, when you click it, these are the flags and the stars and things like that. However, I'm losing some stuff over here. I don't have enough room to show it. So I'm going to press F8. And that just takes care of the stuff on the right, gives me more room, and I can see everything that's up here. The first thing are flags. And you have three different types of flags. You have a pick and a reject or none. So if I click this button right here, and all unflagged photos, just about all of these are. So I mean, it's not really changing anything here. So I'm going to turn that back off. And understand this, these are toggles. You can have as many types of filter operations as you want. And I'm thinking, well, I wonder how many images I put stars on. So I come over here and click, and it will filter them. And that's one star or higher. I can see them all in here, or I can come down here to the film strip and use my left and right arrows. If I have my navigator open, I can see the images over there. Or how about if I say anything that's one star or higher and has a green color? Now, for me, green means go, it's ready to print. So I see three images out of 17,000 that are green and they have at least a one-star rating. So you get the idea of how this works. Don't forget, I can come over here and say green, one star, and would be, say, flagged as a pick or a reject. So you get the idea. You can do any combination that you want. And don't forget this button right here, rating is greater or equal to, rating is less than or equal to, or rating is equal to. Once we've applied our attributes, we have the ability then to look for them no matter how many images we are working with. On to the next.